Now that we've actually gone through and gotten a quick look at the QuickBooks Payroll Service and we went in and set up some payroll items, we can now go start setting up and working with our employees. I wanted to show you how to do that here in this third section. Let's go ahead and flip over to QuickBooks and I will show you how to set up those employees. Just like with customers and vendors, you have an employee center you access right here. This is actually going to show you a list of all of your employees and all the information about the employees here. If you're under the Employees tab and you're clicked on an employee, you're going to see information like the address for the employee, the phone number, any information you would have set up related to that employee. Down at the bottom, you're going to see any transactions for that employee, any to-dos that were set up, any notes, and any sent emails. You can attach a file here just like we talked about with customers and vendors as well. If you needed to edit this particular customer, you can double click and then it will take you right into them. Let me go ahead while I'm here and go through these tabs with you so you'll know what type of information you're going to use when you're setting up your employee. Notice that it brings you in on the personal tab and this is where you're going to put in the employee's name, the name they'd like printed on their checks, their social security number, you can pick a gender, date of birth, a marital status, are they a US citizen, and their ethnicity. Over here on this side, if your employee is disabled, you can say yes or no here, and if they are, you can put in a brief description of their disability. If you have an employee that has an I-9 form, you can say yes that you have it on file or no that you don't and when their work authorization expires right here. For military people that you're hiring, is this person a U.S. veteran? Yes or no? And what is their status currently? The next tab over is their address and contact info. So this is where you put in their address, their phone number, fax, if they have a website, any of that information you want to track. Also you'll notice the emergency contact info right down here. The additional info tab on the left, if you have employee IDs that you've issued to your employee, then you might want to plug that in here. And then these are your custom fields we talked about, and we talked about these when we were actually setting up customers way back in the beginning. You can actually go down to define fields, type in whatever the label is you want for this particular field, and tell QuickBooks if that field should be available when you look at customers, vendors, and or employees, so that you can see where those three came from right there. The Payroll Info tab is probably the most important one here because this is where you set up all the information about the actual pay for the employee. Let's start at the top and I'll just mention what a payroll schedule is. If you have a larger company with a lot of employees, you might have a group of employees paid bi-weekly and another group paid monthly. You can actually tell QuickBooks when you go to run payroll to pay the bi-weekly people, and it knows who's on that list and it will pay them. If you're a smaller company, you may not need to use this option. Here's where you pick the class if you're using that. And then notice here, this is where the earnings are set up. If you have a salaried person, you put in the annual rate like you see here. If you have someone who is paid regular pay, you're going to put in their hourly rate. Now if you wanted to pull all this stuff in here, you could. For example, if they work overtime frequently, you might put that in. But just because it's here doesn't mean they're going to get paid for it each time. It just means you don't have to pull it in manually when you write their paycheck. Over here is where you put any additions, deductions, and company contributions. Remember those payroll items we talked about? We actually set up the dental insurance. That's where this stuff goes. If I click here, you can see the drop-down list. If I wanted to choose dental insurance, I could, and I could put in the exact amount that we're charging for the dental insurance. Up here is where you set up the direct deposit. If you do click on that, you'll actually have to go and set it up with your bank. Now let's talk about taxes for a moment right here. Under the Federal tab, you need to tell QuickBooks if this person's filing status is married, single, and you can see the choices there. How many allowances are they claiming? And do they need any extra withholding held out of their paycheck? Are they subject to Medicare, Social Security, 
advanced earned income credit, and federal unemployment tax, which is company paid. You have to check off the ones that they're actually subject to. Under the state tab, you want to specify which state the employee worked in and which state is subject to the withholding, because it could be two different states. This SUI here is the state unemployment insurance. You can see it's company paid here. And then over here is the state disability insurance. How many allowances are they claiming for the state? And what is their filing status from this list? If they need any extra withholding, you can put that in. And if you have any estimated deductions or things that you want to put here, you can certainly plug that in as well. Under the other tab, some states might have some miscellaneous type things that need to come out of the employee's paycheck. It looks like in California they have this employee training tax, but not all states will have something under this tab. I'm going to go ahead and click OK here. And let's talk real quick about sick slash vacation. If you give your employees sick time or vacation time, you can set up all the criteria here and it will track it for you. How many hours are available as of this date? How many were already used before that date? And is this accrual period from the beginning of the year? Every paycheck or every hour on the paycheck? How many hours are accrued at the beginning of the year? And is there a maximum they can accrue? Also, do you want it to reset the hours each new year? And you can specify when the year begins. Begin accruing sick time on, and there's the date. So you plug in all this criteria, and the vacation options are exact same. Now, it's not going to automatically start deducting this. You have to actually click on their paycheck and say they're taking eight hours of sick time. And it will look at this and deduct that from their hours they have available. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cancel there. Two more tabs left, employee info. This is things like, when did I hire this person? Is there an original hire date? Is there an adjusted service date, release date? That would be when you let them go. Here's the employment details. Are they a regular employee, an owner, an officer? Are they full or part-time? Are they exempt? And are they a key employee, yes or no? And here's the job details over here if you want to set that up. It could be that once they make so much money for the company, they get a bonus here. And you could set all that up. The last tab is your workers' comp, and you can go ahead and assign your workers' comp code right here if you need to do that. That's pretty much all you have to set up when you're setting up an employee. I'm going to go ahead and click OK at the bottom. The way you would set up your employee is by going right here where it says New Employee, and then it takes you to a blank screen so you can set up a new employee. All right, I'm going to cancel out of that. A couple of other things. If you're on this tab that says Transactions, this is going to be a list of transactions for every employee, not just the one you're clicked on. Notice if you wanted to narrow this list, you could. Or if you want to narrow it over here by looking at a different date range, you could do that as well. This payroll tab here, we're going to get to when we get over to Section 5. But this is actually going to be where we pay the liabilities and things like that. So we'll see that shortly. Going back to employees. A couple of things up here, you can manage your employee information. Also here you can print, and this is where you could print paychecks, an employee list, different types of information like that. Also the pay stubs. Here's where you could enter some time. There's the weekly time sheet. We haven't talked about that yet, but we will. But this is where you could enter that they worked eight hours on Monday and six hours on Tuesday, or enter a single activity. You can also send this information to Excel. Or if you want to do a mail merge with Microsoft Word, you can do that too. That's what you need when you're setting up your actual employees. Let me go ahead and close this. Now that you know how to set up your payroll items and your employees, we can actually talk about how we go through and actually pay the employees. Hey everyone, Simon here. Thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe to our channel. Click over there to get the complete seven hour course for QuickBooks 2018 and click over there to get the complete list of videos in this playlist. I'll see you next week with additional videos.